Hello everyone, this is Earth Science teacher Tim Martin, and in this brief video I want to give you an introduction to igneous rocks. If we look at the word igneous, you may recognize the Latin roots of the word. The word ignite and ignition are similar. These have the root of meaning from fire. Igneous rocks are rocks that have cooled from magma. At this point it may be worthwhile to take a look at some of the basics of rocks in general. Keep in mind rocks are made from minerals. Here we can see an example of feldspar and quartz. We add these together with some mica and we're likely to get a rock, in this case pegmatite, a rock very similar to granite. So we can see that rocks are actually made of minerals when we see these macro or large crystal examples. It's also worth taking a look at the whole rock cycle. We'll spend another video talking about the rock cycle, but in this video, we're going to focus on igneous rocks. So let's dive in. There are two major types of igneous rocks. You can see drastically different pictures. The one on the left taken in Hawaii during the large eruption in 2018, and the one on the right taken in Yosemite in California. The picture on the left shows extrusive igneous rocks, and the one on the right shows intrusive igneous rocks. The extrusive rocks, also known as volcanic rocks, are distinct in that the rock comes up as liquid and cools on the surface of the earth. On the other hand, the intrusive or plutonic rocks, plutonic deriving its name from Pluto, the god of the underworld, these are rocks that cool below the surface of the earth. Let's take a look at the characteristics and the textures of each of these types of rock. Intrusive rock, or plutonic rock, are rocks where we can see large, well-developed crystals. In general, these are slower cooling rocks. The most common examples of intrusive igneous rocks are granite, such as this picture here of some North Carolina granite from Stone Mountain. On the other hand, extrusive, or volcanic rock, is a much finer grain texture. This is fairly rapid cooling because it cools up on the surface of the earth. The most common example of an extrusive rock is that of basalt, such as this hand sample. Both of these hand samples are approximately fist-sized. You can see it's very fine grain without the developed crystals like we can see on the granite. There are also some in-betweens and some oddities in igneous rocks. The image on the left shows a mixed example where we have a rock that has fine grain but some visible crystals. This example of porphyry is rock that began to crystallize when it was in a magma chamber, but then the volcanic eruption ejected it out to the surface where the rest of the rock cooled. On the other hand, the rock on the right is a very rapid cooling rock. You may recognize this as obsidian. This is actually a volcanic glass that cooled so rapidly there are no visible crystals within the rock sample. It's also worth taking some time to talk about the chemical composition of igneous rocks. As we look at the chemical composition, let's start out with the granite family. The granite family is also known as the felsic igneous rocks. These rocks are high in silica, or silicon dioxide. In terms of mineral composition, they're composed mostly of quartz and feldspar. The most common example of the granite family is in fact granite. It is also possible to have an extrusive variety of the granite type rocks, and this is what we know of as rhyolite. Due to the high viscosity of the lava, it's much more common that this rock will get stuck and cool within the crust of the earth, forming the intrusive variety. However, when this rock does erupt, it often erupts very violently, so rhyolitic volcanoes are known for their violent explosions. It's also worth noting that sometimes the feldspars may be pink as opposed to white, so some granites may have a distinct orange or pinkish color. And in this case, you can see some intrusive granite and some rhyolite. These samples are taken from in the vicinity of Pikes Peak in Colorado. And we can see a very similar composition, but the larger, well-developed crystals cooled deeper within the earth and the extrusive variety cooled much closer to the surface. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the basalt family. These are known as the mafic igneous rocks. They're relatively low in silica and high in iron and magnesium. 
In terms of minerals, these are composed mostly of minerals like augite and feldspar with basically no quartz. They may also contain significant amounts of olivine and hornblende. Most common example, of course, is basalt, but it is also possible to have the intrusive variety of rock that cools within the earth, and this is gabbro. It's worth noting, many people may refer to this as black granite, but geologically, there is no such as black granite. The intrusive basaltic family rocks are known as gabbro. Then we also have an in-between. If we look at the chemical compositions, we really have a spectrum of different concentrations of minerals, and the diorite family is the in-between. There are examples that are either intrusive or extrusive. Again, they contain a significant amount of feldspars, also some hornblende and biotite. The key distinction is there's little to no quartz in the diorite type rocks. We have the intrusive variety, which is diorite, and the extrusive variety, which is andesite. Many of the volcanoes that occur along subduction zones are andesite lava producing volcanoes. This sample from Mount Rainier in Washington. What we just went over can be summarized by this simple igneous rock diagram. At the top, we have the extrusive variety. At the bottom, the intrusive. On the left, the lighter rocks with more felsic minerals. And on the right, the darker rocks with more mafic minerals. We can see this by looking at the hand samples on the diagram as well. On the left side of the diagram are the rhyolite and granite. In between, we have the andesite and diorite. And on the right hand side, we have the basalt and gabbro with more mafic minerals. You can see the gradually increasing darkness from left to right, and we can also see the increasing size of the crystals from top to bottom. It's also worth noting that these six are the basic examples. There are in-betweens of the in-betweens. So between rhyolite and andesite, for example, we'll find dacite, but there also may be rocks that have even more mafic minerals. We know of these as the ultramafic rocks. So this is just an introduction to the most common and basic types of igneous rock. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again on another geology video.